Hey, everyone. Um, we are today to present Wazi and Cloud, a game-changing duo. A little bit about me, I'm Joe, and I also sometimes go by Mosaka. By day, I work as a software engineer at Microsoft. Um, I specialized in taming the wild uh, Wazi components and Kubernetes pods as a zookeeper for bytes. And by night, well, I pretty much do the same thing, <laughs> really, yeah. Um, I'm a Rust programming language enthusiastic because why not? I like fighting against unsafe code. And if I go offline, you may actually find me online because I love playing video games. I uh, also love weightlifting and shredding through the fresh powder in a Whistler blank camp on skin. Hello, uh, my name is Bailey Hayes. I'm the CTO at Cosmonic. I serve some other open source roles, including uh, being on the technical steering committee of the Bicode Alliance Foundation. I'm also the WASI co-chair, uh, but I have a lot of things in similar with Joe here. I, I really love playing video games. Uh, that's really kind of how I got into prog programming to begin with. And I love skiing. I love Whistler. The gondola is amazing, uh, but maybe not so much on the weightlifting side. So we've got uh, sort of an action-packed agenda today with lots and lots and lots of demos. But first, I want to uh, start this with the problem that we're trying to solve. And the problem is cloud portability and maybe inflexibility. Uh, so the problem is your CTO uh, comes to you and says, you've got to get off our cloud. Uh, that you're currently on. There might be a lot of different reasons for why this happened. Maybe all of a sudden you've run out of cloud credits and uh, you don't want to run on uh, the current cloud provider that you're on anymore. You want to go spend those credits somewhere else. Maybe your company uh, acquired another company and uh, or you're getting merged in and then they have solidly invested in this other provider. Now, you might be thinking, hey, this probably isn't going to happen to me, um, but I've seen it happen enough that it's definitely a real problem, but that's, uh, that's not the only problem that we're trying to solve. Uh, if we just start with saying, let's build our applications in a portable way, uh, we get down to something that can be really powerful. Um, so how many of you, if I came to you and said, uh, you've got a day, bring your microservices to an entirely different uh, cloud provider. I'm really curious how many people could say they could do this. And before I, I, I land with that, I know that it's totally not feasible for like storage and all these kind of like appliances that you have, but just microservices, just calling like, let's say S3. You're not allowed to use S3. You got to use something totally different tomorrow. Who could do that today in one day? Anybody? Yes, okay, I'm gonna ask you questions later. Um, <laughs> I love it. Uh, I love the energy. Maybe you're already on Wazi Cloud, I don't know. But um, that's sort of the, the first part of the, the problem that we're trying to solve. And Joe's gonna give you what we believe is the right answer for this problem. All right, um, we all have heard about Wazi Component Model and Wazi, and we think they are reshaping the software they are reshaping the software uh, paradigms. I want to give you three. Oh, I can't see this slide. I want to give you three characteristics of Wasm components: virtualization, interoperability, and composability. And whenever you have a virtualization technology, you always think about a white piece of paper, and then you start poking holes in, into this paper, and that's how you isolate your components so they can be virtualized and run on an environment that's independent. And then once you have enough holes, you want to be able to communicate with between components um, compiled from different programming languages. So you need an ABI uh, type system defined on the components. That's also given by the component. And finally, you want to be able to compose the components so you can do co-reuse. And the three things that makes the component model really powerful. WASI stands for WASI. WebAssembly System Interface, or, although there is a proposal to rename it to Standardized Interface, builds on top of the component model with its type system, ABI, and provides you standardized interfaces. And in January, we shipped YZ CLI and YZ HTTP as part of the point two YZ. And today, we will be talking about this new thing, YZ Cloud Core, currently at the version of 0.2 draft. 
All right, I want to describe you three villains that we, the heroes, face. The first villain is the core business logic portability. And imagine you have an application and it has the business logic. It has a bunch of uses, a bunch of imports like SDKs to talk to different providers. Now, as a developer, you face ever-changing demands to adapt to a new platform or environment. So the question is, how do you make your core business logic portable so you can easily port it from one platform to another? And you can lean into the component model language neutrality and platform neutrality that allows you to compile logic, business logic code into a component and then you can um, port it from one platform to another. The second villain we all like is the um, cloud, big cloud provider. They give you amazing gadgets, enticing you to their realm. Um, but the problem is when you have to use other services, you want to be able to decouple from your business logic from those providers. And the Wasm component give you the ability to um, compose your uh, logic to a service provider and you can swap it to another one. And the third is, well, the real dragon when you deploy your application to the production and you face day two operations and that's where the maintainability and the scalability issues comes in. You can lean into Wasm's module linking, sandboxing and composability uh, and runtime efficiency that allow you basically to call into the cloud providers, basically like a local function call, so you can get rid of the overhead of using HTTP or gRPC. All right, now I want to give you a demo on YZHTTP. We like to do live demo, that's why we're swapping machines. All right, so what you're looking, looking right now is a Go program that implements WASI HTTP. Um, so the interesting thing about it, it has a main function, and above the main function, there's a Go generate directive. And whenever you build this Go program, it's going to invoke that weight binding code to generate the weight bindings that allows you to lift and lower the Go types into the component types. And if you scroll up, there is an interesting Screw up. On the video? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if I can. Um. Oh. Right. Okay. So now you have the bindings. You can import them as a Go module called HTTP. And the interesting thing is there is an init function which will, will be invoked before every, the main function. That's where you register the exports uh, of YZHB handler. So the main logic you implement is in this handle function, which takes in an HTTP request and return a response. And in this program, we basically say hello from Go as the body of the HTTP response. Um, you can see all of those verbose uh, type names because they are raw, well, they are generated. But in the Bicol lines, we have a project to make uh, idiomatic Go YZHP package. No, now let's run this program. Sorry, build it first. Uh, we use a runtime called TinyGo, which is a Go runtime alternative that's specialized for um, micro devices, microcontrollers and IoT devices. And you use TinyGo build that builds you a WASM module. And then you use the WASM tools to componentize that into a WASM component. So you've gotten to the point now where you served it up? Now you have a component. You can run on Wizen time serve, and that gives you a HTTP server. And we can hit that endpoint. And it will see hello from Go, hopefully. Yeah. OK, I want to show you another runtime called Jayco. Jayco is a WebAssembly runtime in Node.js that has YZHP and YZ02 uh, implemented. And without any code change, without recompiling 
the Go program, we can run that in jQuery serve. And that gives you the same result, presumably. Yeah, so uh, can you explain a little bit more about the Node.js aspect here when you ran jQuery serve? Yeah, it's a completely different runtime from Bison time. And it starts a HTTP server, the same as the Bison time one. Um, it, it does Node.js natively understand what a component is? Um, yeah. Yeah, and, and the way that it basically does that, which I think is really important to call out, is that while uh, these JavaScript environments, uh, they know how to support WebAssembly modules. Uh, they don't ne necessarily know how to support WebAssembly components. And so an SDK like Jenko is used uh, as that part before we, we run it inside Node.js because it um, has this really cool property of being able to insert basically these JavaScript shims and unwraps and opens up that, that WebAssembly component and runs it as a module. And so that's how you're able to get this like ultimate platform portability. And so uh, when WASI.2 uh, launched, uh, we only launched with two different um, CLIs. Uh, all right, we're gonna do this one more time. Um, actually, I'm just gonna go ahead and mirror my display so that it's a little bit safe. Now you are seeing what I'm seeing, which is gonna make this a lot easier. So what I was saying is that by being able to take everything and get it back down to a WebAssembly module, you get that same portability. Uh, and that's also the same way that we plan to support web environments in general, like your browser. But what uh, .2 .2 launched with was uh, the first reference implementation was with Jacob running inside Node.js. All right, so I'm gonna level level up the demo a little bit to use some more complicated code. Um, and this is Blobby. Blobby is uh, something that um, Taylor calls little blobby tables. Uh, and what it does is it's a component, it's a fairly complex component that we, uh, we added both WASI HTTP and as you can guess, WASI blob store uh, to the component. And when we build it, we this this code here is Rust. It's it's not Go code here, uh, but we still use uh, 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 the same kind of underlying tooling, which is WIT bindgen, to be able to generate this component. And and inside here, I'm using different types like WASI HTTP and blob store. And so the reason why we're pulling in HTTP is that this implements a CRUD kind of very simple REST interface for being able to uh, put and get uh, blob store objects. And I'm gonna jump down to one of these other uh, implementations of the blob store and I wanna call one thing out specifically, which is inside something like, I like put, put object. See how I, uh, we're able to say, all right, let's get that container that has the object. Uh, and inside it, I'm gonna say, uh, hey, get that container. Uh, notice that I didn't say like some kind of S3 API. I'm gonna jump way back up uh, and, and show that there's, there's basically no provider specific implementation inside this component. Uh, I think that's pretty interesting because uh, that kind of, that gives you that cloud portability that we were talking about. And you might say, okay, well, how does this work? Um, I have uh, this deployed right now using a provider that Joe wrote. Uh, it's the Azure Blob Store provider. And what I'm gonna do uh, is download uh, a cat image <laughs> um, because Joe told me that his favorite animal is a cat. Uh, so I'm, I'm making a curl. Um, I have dirtily set up some node port forwards, don't judge me. Uh, and to do that, I, I, I do the curl. It's gonna write out cat.webp. All right, let's look at cat. Uh, Oh, right, okay, there's our cat photo. Okay, that's Wazzy Blob Store working in action. It's running in AKS and we can scale it out. Um, but let's go backwards. Let's, let's say uh, it's kind of hard in today's world to write microservices and, and to do all of the development locally. Uh, 
Taylor Thomas gave a talk earlier today, which I really recommend catching if you didn't catch it live, on how to do virtual platform layering. And it's one of those key superpowers that components enable so that we can, given an interface, give it any other different provider implementation. So uh, the, the manifest that I deployed with to start uh, right here is uh, for AKS and see that I linked it up to um, this blob store provider. Uh, now, I'm going to uh, get rid of that deployment, and I'm going to run with something that runs locally. Actually, let's just look at what I have deployed first. App undeploy. Don't do it? Thanks, Taylor. All right, I undeployed it. Uh, now, what I'm going to do is deploy a different thing. Uh, I'm going to wash app deploy. Uh, let's do wadam.yaml. All right, so got this app deployed. I'm going to list out my apps again, just make sure everything's out there and what I expect. It says it's deployed. Uh, and now this is just plain old Blobby. It's not Azure Blobby. What does plain old blo Blobby give me? If I go all the way down here, uh, it is a, a file system provider. Um, and that is what I think is kind of interesting is that I'm able to interact with my local file system to get uh, these images. So if I make the exact same curl uh, as I did before, uh, it should fail, uh, maybe not. Oh, oh, I, I already downloaded this one. Let me do something different. Curl test, doesn't have it, right? Um, actually, let me get rid of that one. Letting the reconciler run for a second, real quick. Um, and now it's deployed. Okay, all right, let's test this now. Failed. That's actually what I wanted, uh, if you can believe me. Um, uh, and if I want, I can push something into this. Uh, so let's do like curl localhost. 8,000, um, I want to I wanna push up a test, uh, and I want to pass in, um, let's actually cheat, and use something like, hey, so I've got a test.txt, and I'm pushing up this local file, let me open it up, and it should say, hi, Wasm Day, maybe, maybe, all right, let's curl that back down. Hey, live demos. Whoop, whoop. Um, all right, so uh, let's 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 take this up one more notch. Um, I have already put an image in my local file system. Um, it's Harley JPEG, and so I'm going to say Harley JPEG, and then I uh, it's going to tell me that I'm trying to download bytes. That I need to pass in an output stream. Uh, and I need to give it a name. Uh, I'm going to call it dog. Uh, so you might might be a little bit of a spoiler. Okay, so I called that dog.jpg. That downloaded locally. And this is Harley Quinn, my dog. Uh, and as you can guess, animals are my favorite. So uh, including dogs like Harley Quinn. Okay, so uh, what did we just show you? Um, this is basically a more complex uh, component uh, that is able to do uh, streaming with bytes. Uh, we're able to deploy it in different kinds of clouds and different types of runtimes, all without tying it to a specific provider implementation. Uh, I, we also have some diagrams that describe how this works, so I'm going to just jump over to those here. Uh, so first one we did, uh, we had it linked to WASI HTTP proxy. And then we linked it, uh, actually, to Azure. Uh, and then 
I showed you another example of linking it to the file system, which is really nice. So when I'm doing local development, it's probably pretty handy to just for me to hack around on some local files, get it the way that I want. Or maybe I do a technique like virtual platform layering, and I do something like uh, using mocks and generate those. And so uh, it's not too, too bad to write a provider. And so uh, I would love it if folks around here decided to write their own. Uh, there's many, many more uh, different services that we want to expose uh, and get more reference implementations for some of these early APIs. And so that is really the main thing that we're asking you to do here. Um, so I'm going to pass it back to Joe. Yeah, if you'd like to get involved, I put all the links here. There is a YZ Cloud Core repo for all the discussions for YZ Cloud Core proposals that includes YZ Key Value, YZ Blob Store, Messaging, SQL, Runtime Config, and HTTP. There is also a YZ Cloud channel on the Zulip um, chat and under the bike lines. And all the tools we demo today, there is a link here. So, uh Thanks everybody. Thanks for bearing with us in the live demos. You know, they're always very exciting. Uh, and uh, I think um, if anything, I, I want your takeaway to be that there are a lot of different projects that are happening. There are a lot of different areas to get involved. There are many different tools, right, that are part of this ecosystem. And so uh, we would really love it if you came and joined us. And now we've got a little bit of time if we want to uh, ask for any questions. We go. Any questions? I think this is super interesting also because um, does this mean, do you see this as a competition, direct competition to Dapper? Because I, I see this could completely obsolete Dapper. Um, <laughs> we actually have reached out to the Dapper team and we think we, had, we can have a great collaboration with the Dapper. So Dapper APIs can there is interoperability between Dapper APIs and YZ Cloud Core. And there is actually a work to convert the weights IDL from the component model into uh, the D Dapper API, Open API spec. So those two can actually talk to each other. Yeah, and I, I just want to say from the WASI perspective, we really love it when we can see real implementations that are bringing people value. Uh, if you know, extra duper bonus points if it's been already standardized in some other form, like uh, WebGPU, for example. Uh, that's something that we would love to bring into the WASI subgroup and put on a standardization path. So a question over here in the spicy section. Uh, who put their hand up? Okay, it's more like a fun question, but thanks a lot for the nice presentation overall. So you talk about you like video games, I think. Everyone likes video games in the room, or a lot of people like video games in the room, but which, <laughs> which video game you most enjoy? Because that's a really interesting question, I think. <laughs> well, last year I was playing Elden Ring a lot, and uh, the, the all-time favorite is Apex Legends. Uh, Baldur's Gate 3, I am still working through chapter 2. Let's go! <laughs> Thanks for the uh, solve on the uh, spicy question there. And there was one over here. <laughs> so, a uh, follow up on the spicy question. So, is there already an um, implementation using Dapper for the uh, Wazi Cloud, or uh, can you think of one? Uh, there is no, there is no implementation of Wazi Cloud Chrome Dapper. Yeah. What, what we just showed was very, very, very hot off the presses, like, you know, uh, stuff that happened in the past week. And so uh, what, there's, there's no other reference implementation, and that's why I jumped over to Wasm Cloud, uh, where as, a, as one of the maintainers and basically my entire team have been working for the past week uh, to, to build out some of this so that we could show a live demo today. Great questions. Not a spicy question, a salty question. So key, key value, is it uh, only for Redis folks or you, uh, does that also support Cassandra people? Um, the key value design is supposed to support all types of key value stores and 
at the moment, the key value spec is designed to have a eventual consistency operations. So it has a single key operation and the batch operations, but we have discussions on whether or not the consistency level is a little bit too weak. Maybe we probably need some read after write or session consistency for that, for the majority use cases. But yes, uh, Cassandra is part of it. Uh, I'll do a follow-up on that one, maybe a spicy one, actually. Liam. Why not? I guess it's saucy on here. Uh, for you, Bailey, maybe. Um, oh, no. uh, Machine Metrics talked about that as a friction point. Uh, you know, they said, um, hey, you know, Wazi SQL wasn't a great abstraction for us. And they, they pointed out, they said, well, nothing stopped us from tightly coupling to Wazi Postgres, uh, for example, you know, creating a tight coupling. Where's the, how do you draw the line when you're creating these abstractions here between the lowest common denominator uh, and you know, the, you know, the superset of features? You know, what goes in, what goes out? Is it experience? You know, um, is, it, is there gonna be a marketplace of like three or four different versions of, of, of key value stores at different levels of abstractions that might have different interfaces or features? Oh, geez, you have a slide. We have a slide, go ahead. Well, there are you know, trade-offs when you want to abstract all the key value stores into a generic interface and you want to make that portable. And this is a slide we skip, but I imagine there will be two axes, portability and feature richness. And we believe there is a curve, non-linear curve, maybe exponential, the more feature you have, the less portable your application can go. So on the one extreme, you have YZ HTTP, which is basically a simple feature that you allow you to do HTTP. Um, this one is extremely portable. You can run it on anywhere. On the other end, we have a specific cloud provider that give you all the amazing gadgets, um, but it's vendor locking to their realm. Um, so if you use all the Azure services, it's pretty hard to port to another cloud provider. But we believe there will be a balancing act. There will be a perfect sweet point for Wazi Cloud Core where you have a minimum set of features for 80% of the use cases, but still very portable. And uh, before we close out that question, Joe also had another slide that technology made hard for us to show. Um, but I want to bring that one up because, you, Joe, you actually called this one out specifically as something you wanted to talk about. Yeah. <laughs> I was about to give a status update for all the YZ proposals. Um, blob storage, it's ready to debut. Um, you can implement that. There are some discussions to simplify the APIs. Messaging, it's fairly stable. Uh, key value, I mentioned, there are discussions to add like higher consistency levels. Configuration is uh, undergoing fine tuning, but it's ready to implement as well. YZ SQL is the problem child. Um, it's, it has growing pains. Um, it's really hard to implement as it right now, so it's likely to be replaced with something else. YZ distributed log service, we thought it's a very nice thing to have, but it's kind of too advanced for the 80% use cases, so we bring it out scope of YZ Cloud Core. In the future, we might have a YZ Cloud extension that would be perfect fit for the distributed log services. Um, uh, announced last week at uh, WASM.io was um, WA.dev, the WASM registry. That's moving along really, really quickly. Uh, where do you see uh, this playing into uh, what you've discussed today? I'll jump on that one. Uh, so I, I really expect to see someone uh, push up the WASI interfaces for a lot of these so that other folks can uh, have a single place that they can iterate on these 020 drafts. And that's, uh, that's currently the version it's at because it's iterating really, really fast. So we're not cutting like release candidates like we did uh, leading up to the launch of 02. Um, and so I think having common interfaces is definitely a key. Uh, now, a little bit more challenging because a lot of providers are actually native code in, in a lot of these cases. And it's for things that maybe don't compile super great to, to WebAssembly today. Uh, I think maybe a WebAssembly native registry 
one day could support that, uh, especially if we come up with like a common plugin that a lot of the different runtimes would support. And then if we had a plugin package, then, you know, bada bing, bada boom. But uh, what I really want to see uh, with virtual platform layering is for folks to make a virtualized version of a lot of these interfaces. You know, Taylor showed off uh, virtualizing key value and doing that in memory. I it would be really great if we had different components that were available for people to use so that you just had something that's completely isolated to your one component sandbox. Hi. Uh, is it ready for uh, socket-based uh, applications, like, for example, to yeah, here. <laughs> to uh, to for example, Tokyo-based uh, uh, application, like, you know, where we expose uh, web sockets, like, is it ready for uh, socket-based applications as well? We don't use any socket interfaces today inside WASI Cloud uh, Core, but I don't see any reason why somebody wouldn't be able to build on top of WASI sockets, which is part of uh, .2, uh, and introduce a new interface that we could all start talking about. Is, is that what you would say, Joe? I, yeah, I think WASI sockets would be a bit too low level for WASI Cloud Core. We have WASI messaging for exchange messages to the broker, and we have YZ HTTP, which is a bit high level. That's what we want. Maybe one more question. The closing will be fast. We'll get to you. questions out of from here that time. gentleman there. Uh, which one? Oh, right here. All right. I don't think it's spicy this time. Um, so you said something about the portability issues with, with, with some things. Uh, are you familiar with Cosmopolitan? and their work on um, yeah, basically making LLMs portable by having a compiler that can run on any operating system TM. <laughs> no, but uh, you know, I really uh, welcome proposals for how we can do this portably. You know, that's something that was a big topic of discussion a month ago when a lot of the Bytecode Alliance uh, contributors got together and were like, "What do we? What do we need to figure out this year?" Uh, obviously, you know, I, I, I gave a hint earlier today that was like, "Let's let's let's ship a lot of Wazzy." <laughs> was kind of my summary for it. But another key thing to facilitate that is finding ways to make it so that we can build provide. Uh, and, and link them in uh, to the runtime that a lot of us are building on top of. Uh, so I, I really would love uh, ways to make that really easy uh, and work across a lot of different environments. Okay, uh, please join me in thanking uh, Joe and Bailey. And Joe, let me say you're worth the wait. Thank you. Thank you.